913-408-7957. It's 7.35 on a Wednesday morning, and it is great to be here on KCMO. You will hear the speech from J.D. Vance tonight, his first since being picked as Donald Trump's vice president, right here on 95.7 FM. We will air that coverage starting at 8 o'clock until 11. And then you will also hear uh, Donald Trump's historic speech, the first speech, obviously, he has given since the uh, near assassination this past Saturday. So tonight, tomorrow, 8 p.m., we'll have you covered. The first two nights, I mean, they were good, but um, now we're getting to the big leagues here. All right, uh, let's go to Shawnee. Leonard's on KCMO. Go ahead, Leonard. What's up, buddy? Hey, not much. Hey, Pete, if Sarah Sanders would have got the VP nod from Trump, then her four-year-old would have ran into Trump's arms in that speech. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's very good. Very good. (laughs) But, but, hey, you know, in the Nevada where Biden was talking yesterday, he was talking to everyone saying, here's what I'm going to do in the, my first 100 days of my second term. Well, he's got more than 100 days until the next term. Why doesn't he start right now to do it? The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best is to plant it today. Why doesn't he do that right now in the next 100 d- days? You know, it's, it's one of the things that when politicians, thank you, Leonard, uh, say stuff like that, like, especially when they're in office I, in my first 100 days. It's like, am I missing something or have you been in charge for the last three and a half years? Right? I mean, that's what you're asking. And it just comes off so disingenuous, especially when you're a guy who's been in Washington, D.C. for half a freaking century with only a four-year gap in there from... January of 17 to January of 21, but half a century. And now, amazingly, all these ideas that, you know, couldn't get worked on the last 50 years. Don't worry. I'm on it day one of January 2025. It's like, it's just, it doesn't sound good. It it doesn't matter who, you know, you like. It just doesn't sound good when you have all that data. 50 years in elected office, eight years as a VP, four years as a president, But don't worry, the best is yet to come, okay? The best is yet to come. Unbelievable. And if you didn't hear him, uh, yeah, you mentioned last night, uh, I haven't even touched on this yet, but Joe Biden did address the NAACP. And here's just a little mashup of what it sounded like. Uh, A lot of anythings. And you know when the anything gets broken out, we've got a train of thought issue. I know. I know you say, Joe, you may not have a Congress. Well, guess what? You all told me I couldn't pass the Inflation Reduction Act. You all told me I couldn't face it. Anyway, we did it. We're going to bring rents down, as I said. We're going to build 2 million affordable homes. And cap rent increases to 5% a year, so corporate landlords can't God. Anyway, I don't want to get going. I'm going to get very upset. What? But, but there, there, there's gouging here. <laughs> By the way, not only saves lives, it will save taxpayers. Just what I did on the first round on dealing with Medicare. It saves the taxpayer $160 billion. Because they don't have to pay these exorbitant prices to these, anyway. (laughs) Got a lot of anyways last night with the NAACP. You know, and this comes... uh, Just hours before this report dropped from the New York Post, Uh, this is this morning. This is just here in the last few minutes. President Biden held a tense Zoom call with dozens of moderate Democrats. That was, quote, even worse than the debate less than one hour before the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. The 81 year old president repeatedly lost his train of thought on the Zoom call and was dismissive of Democrats concerns about his 2024 reelection campaign following his uh, debate performance last month. One person on the call said, quote, the call was even worse than the debate. He was rambling. He'd start to answer a question, lose his train of thought. He would just say whatever. He really couldn't complete an answer. I lost a ton of respect for him. Another member of Congress saying, quote, the president was rambling, dismissive of concerns, unable or unprepared to present a campaign strategy. Of course, that was moments before, sounds like an hour before, Um, the attack on President Trump. 
So that means all this stuff with Biden has cooled off for a little bit. And if he gets through the convention next month, I mean, he's the guy. He's the guy. All right. How many of you are excited for Twister to come out? I I know Mark's raising his hand in there. Mark's all fired up. Uh, The original is one of my all-time favorite movies. It was released, can you believe it, almost 30 years ago, May of 96. Well, Twister comes out today. Today's the day. Mark's all, he's lit in there, man. I need to go see it. (laughs) I know. Just don't leave work early, okay? Don't, don't, Don't scoot out on me before your job's over here. Well, the Hollywood Reporter writes this story about Twister. Excuse me, they're calling the sequel Twisters. So, Twisters, which comes out today. Hollywood Reporter writes here that it's racked up positive reviews so far. Now, I saw the trailer. I thought the trailer was cheesy. I'm not, and it's hard because the original's so good. I wasn't a fan of the trailer, but I will watch it, and we'll have a full review at some point here. But here's what the Hollywood Reporter writes. The film chronicles an unprecedented outbreak of violent storms that tear through the American heartland and as characters spouting plenty of meteorological jargon. But the one thing Twister doesn't have. Come on, what would the woke Hollywood reporter demand that the movie Twisters have and talk about? Homosexual relationship. No, 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 they, thems. No, that's already covered. Yeah. (laughs) What would they want in a movie about weather? Oh, well, they want you to say it's all part of of climate change, right? There we go. Ding, Mm -hmm. ding, 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 ding. We've got a winner. The Hollywood Reporter writes here, the one thing Twisters doesn't have, a reference to climate change. They write here, this is rather surprising. The possible impact of climate change on tornadoes is complicated and still being figured out. But scientists seem to agree tornado patterns are changing. And in any case, the American Red Cross recently told ABC News the climate crisis is forcing the American Red Cross to respond nearly twice as many large disasters as we did one decade ago. So the Hollywood Reporter is very surprised, a.k.a. very upset, that climate change did not make the cut, John, in the new Twisters movie. It's interesting how they work that stuff in. I was watching one of my cop show dramas and... They're in New York, and they're looking for a perp who's not from this country, and they, can we, uh, we need to call ICE. You know, Wow, we, they're busy. They got a backlog of all these conservative governors that want them to arrest illegal. So I'm like, I told them, did you see how they work that stupid thing in, in their little circular dialogue that they do? That's what they always do on yeah, these shows, somewhere right? Somewhere in there, they got to work, try to work it in. But here's what the director, Lee Isaac Chung, recently said on why there's no climate change references in the movie. Well, first off, this movie appeals to conservative America. (laughs) You know, we're the ones who actually live in Tornado Alley. And number two, he says here, the director, uh, Lee Isaac Chung, I just wanted to make sure that with the movie, we don't ever feel like it is putting forward any message. I I don't feel like films are meant to be message oriented talk about a bombshell Bravo. Bravo. all right How about I, where's the go ahead, let's get a golf applause <laughs> wait you mean making a movie that's not pushing left-wing ideology whoa the lead couple's hetero too right as i don't know mark i haven't looked that far into it yet buddy i Here, just know there's big tornadoes i don't know who's screwing who in the movie a okay very, <laughs> a very basic piece of information to help those concerned about that topic a tornado is a climate change. It's where <laughs> hot air and cold air combust. Oh, that's great. Right? Yes, that's so true. You know, this is the kind of BS pressure, though, that the media and Hollywood will put on each other to put forth political messages and do all of their content. And regular Americans don't want it. Just give me a movie that appeals to everybody <laughs> that leaves your politics at the door. That's, wow, big tornado. Look at that. That's great technology. Very cool. Wow, that was a great movie. Back in my day, we were only worried about the movies whoring out product placement. (laughs) Well, you see the Doritos and the Pepsi in there. That was pretty blatant. (laughs) Nowadays. If they're in Oklahoma and they don't show any red hats, that's admitting a few things, though, right? Yeah. There should be red hats. Yeah, I could see that. Yes, very much so. Just, Just red, right? Just red. Just red. Not saying what the red has to say on it. Just just a red hat or two. You know? 
And I can tell you, as someone who used to live down there, and it was way before Trump, they loved their red hats. 